today we're talking about six of the best CPU coolers for the new Ryzen 5000 series chipsets. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're talking about six of the best CPU coolers for the Ryzen 5000 series chipset, and that's the 5950X, the 5900X, the 5800X, and the 5600X. Even though the 5600X comes with a stock cooler and none of the others do, I, I don't think as far as performance and, and keeping your temperatures cool, because it's that stealth cooler that the lowest one in the line, it seems like they're downgrading what they're doing over there at AMD. Anybody who has that 5600X, I would definitely recommend not using it. I know that uh, people have relied on AMD to put stock coolers in there when they're doing budget builds. And I guess if you're doing a budget build, you're not really buying the 5950, right? Still, it was an option people had and taking an option away feels very, um, dare I say, intel -y. right? So the age old debate of liquid versus air. There will be liquid and air cooling in the recommendations that I make today. But just so you know, I'm biased towards air. Uh, I like them because they're simple. I like them because they're efficient and they work. Uh, I remember way, way, way back when, years ago, when I tried my first attempt at uh, liquid cooling and I didn't do a great job of securing my connections and I ruined <laughs> my computer. Uh, but that's a uh, my fault thing. But ever since then, I've been skittish. But, but water cooling has become a lot better than what it was. I mean, the um, connections and the seals are, are fantastic. And water cooling has a, uh, a couple specific functions. One, when you're overclocking, you need that heat absorption that liquid does that air can't do. It holds more heat and it, it draws more heat away. Another thing, liquid cooling, as far as aesthetics, looks cooler. If you're trying to show something off on your board, you don't need this big hunking heat sink in the way. Air, you know, it's easier to install. It works and it, it, it's usually cheaper than its liquid counterparts. Let's talk about TDP or thermal design power. Uh, it's a very complicated subject and we won't be getting into it, but I do have a link to a line of tech tips, tech quickie video explaining it, um, explaining its validity or it's not validity. We're gonna have two budget, two mid range and two high end coolers. Let's get into it. The first cooler is a cooler. If you're looking for a nostalgia boost from AMD and you like the way AMD makes their coolers and puts them on the board because it's something about that AMD cooler that looks very cool. And that's the AMD Wraith Prism. It's the upper line of the AM4 chip series coolers that AMD makes. It's a very efficient cooler. And of course, if you're buying the lower end, the Ryzen 5 of the 5000 series, you do have that stock cooler. I don't think the performance is going to get you, honestly, anywhere near as cool as you would want to be because it's just good enough. If you need just good enough or your money's tight, I get it. But if you can manage to scrape up a couple more dollars on your budget bill or whatever, whichever chipset you use, I think that Wraith Prism is going to be good. So it does have RGB. If you're into RGB, I happen to not really care. I want black, matte black, uh, gray, silk. I want that clean black look. Now, the Wraith Prism uh, comes with a thermal paste applied to it. I would tell you, don't use that thermal paste. Um, Arctic MX4 or Arctic Silver 5 are great choices to use in this scenario. So what I would do is take a paper towel or cotton swabs or a lint-free towel and get some 99% isopropyl alcohol and clean that off and reapply the thermal paste. The AMD Wraith Prism is gonna cost you $36.99. I think that's a good deal. Uh, especially for your low end budget uh, ranges of the CPU coolers. Another thing 
that you got to watch out for. I used to own a repair shop and people would come in and say, hey, here's my custom gaming build I built. And I, I, it, it, it's, it, it runs hot. The fan is always on. I don't know what happened. And I would take it apart and they wouldn't have taken the plastic off the metal part. So make sure one, take the plastic off two put thermal paste on and both of those arctic silver and arctic mx4 are great options all the links for everything i'm talking about is going to be in the description so check those out the next one in the budget category is going to be the cooler master rgb 212 this one has the aesthetics i like um, if you choose not to do rgb it has that cool black uh, aesthetic and it's something that I happen to enjoy. But if you like RGB, it comes with a remote control and you can control all that. Those four heat pipes that are coming from it seem to really dissipate the heat. Um, I have a friend who runs this same cooler and he says he gets in the 70s and 60s degrees Celsius range whenever he uses it. I think it's a really cool look. I think it's a really cool device and I think when it comes to your budget bill, this would be a good addition to that. And that runs about $41.99. Now we get into the mid range of our CPU coolers. And the next one I would recommend would be the Noctua, 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 Noctua I'm not sure how you say it. The Noctua NH-U12S. Noctua seems to be everybody's perennial favorite. It, it does everything well, cooling temperatures, with a lot of people who test these out are, are really good all the time. If you look at the design of this particular model, it's more tall than it is wide. When you get to some air coolers, they're so wide that you gotta watch out for the clearances on the heat spreaders on your RAM. So by being taller and slimmer, um, it, 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 you get all that Noctua technology and cooling in a slimmer package. Let's address the elephant in the room when it comes to Noctua. They are ugly. Who decided to pick this color scheme for Noctua? I have no idea. I think it's a clever market employee to, huh, here's something that's really, really good and it's ugly. But guess what? We, we're gonna sell you the solution. So if you go, if you go to Amazon, you'll see that they do sell black fans, but the black fans also have those, um, ugly brown anti-vibration pads but if you if you can find an aesthetic to go with the original brown on tan noctua and that's your your style go for it i don't know anybody who likes it they are really good so you can buy the black or whatever color um, vibration pads or anti-vibration pads and put on there is it more expensive yes because you gotta buy fans that aren't looking <laughs> that don't look like that to go on with the aesthetics if that's something you care about. If it's not something you care about and you just and you just care about good cooling, then that Noctua is a very, very good option for $59.95. The next one in our mid-range CPU coolers is our first liquid of this video. And it's gonna be the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML 240L for $79.99. Uh, of course, it has RGB. And when you're talking about overclocking and, and putting a heavy workload on a CPU, then you wanna think about liquid cooling because it absorbs more heat than a heat sink can. And if you're putting an extraneous workload on it, uh, this is going to be a good one if you're starting out overclocking. The thing about AIOs is they do have a cleaner look. They don't have a big hunking heat sink in the middle of your motherboard to throw off whatever aesthetics you're going for. The thing you have to watch out for when it comes to AIO pumps is size, right? So you have 120, 240, and then 360. And that's usually how many fans you have on it you have, and how big the fan is. So you have 120, that's one fan. 240, two fans, and of course, 360 is gonna be three fans. But you also have to look out when they're talking about your 140 millimeter fans, right? So 140, 280, 420 right and the reason why i say this is you have to make sure that whatever case you put it in is made for one how long 
that AIO is and how wide it's going to be. Because it'll suck if you get a 420 and it's only made for a, a 240 uh, IO pump. So make sure whatever case you have, you can put it. And then a lot of cases allow you to put it on top or in front. And make sure whenever you're installing these things, you install the fans or you install the pump the right direction. Because it's not going to help you if it's not, the airflow isn't correct. If it's going against what you're doing, you won't have any good cooling at all with that. We're going to the higher end as far as CPU coolers. And this next cooler is my absolute favorite cooler of all time. And it's the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. This thing is massive. I love this static. It's, it's a nice cool black. It's big it, and it cools fantastically. The build that I have, I have it on there and doing different stress tests. It never really got above the, the 60s in temperature. It just, it, it dealt with everything so well. I use it in a lot of the builds that I do because it just works. The thing about the Dark Rock Pro 4, it is honking. It is big. So just like any other, and especially this one, you got to be careful of your heat spreaders on your RAM because on some builds that I do, the space between the top of the heat spreader on the RAM and the bottom of the air cooler that goes on it is minuscule. It's, it's just barely there in most cases because this thing is so, so big, it's recommended that you install it outside before you put in the motherboard. So put it on the motherboard before you even put the motherboard in there. So that also means you got to put the RAM on before you put the cooler on this motherboard because it is a, a beast. And even installing it, you have to, it's a, they give you this long screwdriver to install the cooler on there. And it, it, it it's, it's big, but it does such a great job. I, I love it and it's uh, for $89.90 so that's a pretty good deal and if you like air cooling to me that you can't get no better as far as air cooling than the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. And our last one of the video is going to be a company that I recently found but have been impressed with a lot of their products and it's going to be Arctic. The Arctic Liquid Freezer Two. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2, either the 240 or whatever variant, it, it doesn't matter. This thing is, it calls to me. The aesthetics are fantastic. I love the, the black with the little accents of gray and silver and it, it just does very well. I'm not a big overclocker, but I decided to, I had an old, I want to say it was like the 3000 series of uh, Ryzen that um, I didn't need anymore because the person I was upgrading was upgrading their CPU to the Threadripper. I think the first one that came out. I took it and did some overclocking and I pushed it as far as I possibly could and this thing just handled it. It, it handled it no problem. I, everything I threw at it, it we, we had some really good optimal operating temperatures with that even through stress tests and things like that i never got above i don't think i ever got above 65 70 to be honest with you and i was throwing everything i could at it uh it's a really really good one so if you're looking into getting into overclocking and and a strenuous workload on your cpu this arctic product is um i was very impressed with it guys that's it Thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Tell me why you didn't like the video. And if you like more content like this, uh, subscribe to the channel. We have gaming reviews. We do gaming bundles. We do a lot of tech advice, some product reviews, and also some IT career questions. So if you like that kind of thing, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one.